welcome to the Copy for Christ channel. I got an amazing piece of work message for you guys today. All right, and I think this message is going to be really good um, and inspiring to come on the heels of the uh, Power of Prayer series that we just released. So uh, the title of this message is simply um, The Hardest Words Ever Heard or uh, The Other Side to God, okay? Because a lot of people have a misconception about Christianity and looking at it as a bunch of pansies and soft people and, and things like that. And they don't really understand the heart of God, the love of God, the agape love, what that truly means. Uh, but this is going to be on the heels of the Power of Prayer uh, series. And, you know, we should always use the book of Psalms as prayers over ourselves, our families, uh, our lives, for others. Um, they're very good to do that because King David really had the heart of God. He really did. And... Um, we're going to read a psalm. We're going to read Psalm 109, verses 2 through 20. And we're going to pray these as a prayer. And if you have any enemies in your life or things like that, like some of this is going to sound very, very harsh, but you have to realize that God takes vengeance for his children. Like those who harm you, like that's why it's best for you to do nothing about it, like in retaliation, because that's not the heart of God at all, okay? We're to pray for our enemies and love our enemies the best that we can. It does not mean to walk hand in hand with them, okay? People get it twisted a lot. So let's I, I, let's just get right into it, okay? We're going to pray this as a prayer, and if you have any enemies in your life, use this as a prayer to safeguard yourself, safeguard your family, everything that, that, that concerns you, in Jesus' name. All right, so Psalm 109, 2 through 20. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. And let his prayer become sin. Did you hear that? Let his prayer become sin. So if there is somebody praying against you that is a wicked person, pray to God that their actual prayer will become sin. See that? All right. Verse 8, let his days be few, and let another take his office. Does that mean let him have a long life? No, let his days be few, and let another take his office. You know why? Because the damage that can be caused to the house of God. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Did you hear that? Did you hear these prayers? These are serious, serious prayers. Let him be cut off continually from the face of the earth, so that his memory, cut off the memory of them from the face of the earth. Because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water, 
and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of my adversaries from the Lord, and of them that speak evil against my soul. Okay? You guys can read it yourselves. Psalm 109, verses 2 through 20. Okay? Use it as a prayer against your enemies. Or don't if you're not led to. Uh, but just realize that, you know, our prayers mean something. There's power behind them. And to pray something like this, like, whew, we, for a righteous person to have to pray something like this against an enemy, like, that's, that's serious business. It really is. So that's the other side to God and the most uh, dangerous words <laughs> ever spoken. All right? Love you guys. Reach out if you need anything. And we'll see you in the next one. Salud.